the lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified at Calvary, but he rose with victory. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. slain he's alive forever he shall reign he's alive they crucified at calvary but he rose with victory he's alive Slain, he's alive forever. He shall reign. He's alive. They crucified. They crucified at Calvary. At Calvary. But he rose. But he rose with victory. He's alive. He's alive. You believe that today? Wait. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. All 
conquered my enemy. He put them, he put them under my feet. Hero, hero in glory, in glory, all power, all power and, authority. and authority. He conquered, he conquered my enemy. My enemy. He, put them, he put them under my feet. He's alive. He's alive.
when they crucified my Lord were you there when they crucified oh my Lord oh sometimes it causes me Tremble, oh, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him? Cross. Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Oh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It causes me. Tremble, oh, tremble. Where you there when they nailed him to the cross? Where you there when they pierced him? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, mm, tremble. Where you there when they pierced him in the side? Mm, were you there when they held him and he died? Yeah.
on that same day, the third day, um, people were returning home from the Passover that was held in the city of Jerusalem. And when you look at our text, which is the road to Emmaus, is the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, and it picks up in verse 13. And on that same day with the same events, our text zooms in on the two of them. And when you read the two of them, it refers back to verse 10 and 11 of the same chapter that talks about the apostles and the disciples. So when you hear two of them, it presumes that these two are followers of Jesus as well. The two of them, Deacon Smith, are walking home to a village called Emmaus. Um, it's about a seven mile journey from Jerusalem. And as the two were walking, I need us to notice four points that this scene that you just witnessed was talking about. First of all, in verse 15, as they were walking, they were also talking. They were discussing, Lance, these things. And as they were discussing these things, the Bible says that Jesus himself drew near to them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Now notice it did not say that at first they didn't see him, they didn't recognize him, but it, it specifically says that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. It's just like if you're watching something on TV and you don't want your child to see it, what do you normally do? You will cover their eyes. So I need you to understand when the Bible says they were kept from recognizing him, it was like something covered their eyes. The question is, was it the things? Was it um, the distractions that cover their eyes? I say no, it wasn't the distractions. It was the fact that they did not believe. At any time you don't believe, there will always be something there to keep you from recognizing Jesus. That's the first point. The second point is that Jesus initiates a dialogue by asking them, here it is, what are you talking about? What are you discussing? What are, here it is, what are the words? Everyone say words. What are the words you are discussing? That's what he wants. What are you talking about? The third point is one of them who were, uh, who's identified as Cleopas, he says two things. This is what I need you to know. He says two things. He says, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Here it is. Who does not know? The two things he says, are you the only stranger? Number one who does not know, why does he call this person a stranger? Because his eyes are kept from what? Recognizing that is Jesus. But the two of them, watch this, were followers of Jesus, but yet because their eyes were kept, because they didn't believe, they didn't recognize who Jesus was and called him a stranger. You know, <laughs> the only thing that should be strange to us are things that's outside of God, not the things of God. But when you don't believe God, even the things of God would be strange to us. Why is it strange? Because he says, are you the only one who does not know? As to imply, we know. You don't know? He's implying that he knows more than Jesus. Isn't that our problem? 
The reason why we don't come to him, pray to him until the last moment is because we think we know more than him. We know how to figure it out. We know how to fix it. But, G, but he says, he says, Jesus, the fourth point, he says, well, tell me what things since I don't know about it. Look, look at verse 19. What things? What things? Here it is. The first one is things about Jesus of Nazareth. Underline that. What says Nazareth? Jesus of Nazareth who was a what? Prophet. Mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Now what's the problem here? The problem is they didn't say Jesus the Christ. They said Jesus of Nazareth. The problem is they only recognized him as a prophet who was doing well by God, not the son of God or son of man. Here's their problem. That's why they didn't believe because they only saw Jesus as a man and as a prophet and not greater than. I don't care what you're going through, you've got to see Jesus greater than what you are going through in order to truly believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. But secondly, number two, verse, verse, verse 20, it says, and our chief priests, leaders, handed him over. That's a problem. Because now what they're doing, they are blaming the chief priests and the leaders for Jesus' death. As to say, they took his life. And Jesus says, ain't nobody taking my life. I give my life. You see the problem? Here's the problem. Because they were kept from seeing him and did not believe him, they didn't understand that his death was his assignment. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff that you're going to go through. You're going to be persecuted. People are going to talk about you. People are going to rat you out. People are going to just rip you apart. But you got to understand, it's not for your bad. It's your assignment. So don't try to figure out why people don't like you, why people lying on you. You got to understand, God, I trust you because I understand that everything I'm going through is only my assignment. But when you don't believe Jesus, you don't believe assignment. When you don't believe Jesus, you don't understand assignment. It is a sign for you to be persecuted. It's a sign for you to be talked about. It's a sign to you to be beat down. It's a sign to you to be body slammed. It's a sign for your folk to talk about you and leave you and rat you out and for you to lose stuff. It's a sign. Tell somebody, it's my assignment. But you got to believe it's your assignment. Look at, look at, look at the third point. Watch this. Number, verse 21. Here it is. What it says. We had hoped. We're going to stop right there. We had hoped. They didn't believe it. Because they didn't recognize him as the Christ. They didn't understand assignment. And guess what they, leave, they left with? We had hoped. We had hope. We had hope. Hear it now? We had, past tense, we had hope. Which means now they have no hope. And when you don't believe and when you don't understand assignment, you will not have hope. Why did they have hope? Because all they saw was death. And anytime we see death, loss, fall, collapse, anytime we just see the trouble, death will always disturb our hope. So here's the question. What's keeping us from seeing Jesus? What's keeping us from recognizing him. Here it is. What is it that's distracting us to the point that we don't believe it? Look at somebody and ask them, what is it? Oh, what love he has for me. Yeah. 
Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch <laughs> like you and me. That's love. That's love. Say, Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary. To Calvary. To save a wretch. To save a wretch. They hung him high, they stretched him wide, he hung his head, for me he died, that's love, that's love, say they hung him high, they, hung him high. they stretched him wide, they stretched him wide. He And that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. Somebody ought to lift their voice and say, That's not how the story ends. The story ends. Three days later. If you know anything about April Fool's Day, <laughs> it started back in the 1500s. And, and then it's the purpose of April Fool's Day is for somebody uh, to plot and to scheme in order to pull off a joke and put a, pull a joke on an unfortunate victim. It's not a coincidence. Happy birthday, Mr. Crane. Uh, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> it's not a coincidence uh, that April Fools falls on Resurrection Sunday. Uh-huh. But the question is, which one of us will be the next victim to fall for the plot and the scheme. You saw at this last scene as the two continued walking and dialoguing with who they thought was a stranger, they began to vent. They began to vent about the third day because you know Jesus says on the third day I rise. The problem is, Lamar is that they didn't see him. We hadn't seen him, so he said he was going to do it, but we hadn't seen him, even though he's walking with him, because, but because their eyes are kept, they don't understand uh, that that's Jesus, and so they see him as a strange person. And then they start getting on the women. They must not went and watched that movie, Acrimony. <laughs> <laughs> they start getting on those women, talking about those, you hear about those women? Those women. Talking about they went to the tomb, found the tomb that was empty, and then had the uh, audacity to say they saw some angels. 
And the angel said words, the angel said that he's alive. And then they said, but the disciples, men, the apostles, men, said they didn't see him. So instead of them believing the women concerning life, they said our boys. So therefore, we're not going to believe those women concerning life, we're going to believe our boys. Okay, come closer. Because when you look at Genesis chapter number three, there was another woman who had a conversation with a fallen angel. And the fallen angel gave her a message that led to death and the first Adam was standing right beside her and he bought into that message he believed that message concerning death but when women have a message concerning life these men refuse to believe it you, you'll catch that on your way home. Come closer, please. Why is it that we're so quick to believe negative, foul stuff? But we got to scratch our heads on words that leads to life. How quick do we jump on the negative bandwagon? And when somebody says something that leads to life, we say, I don't know about that. I, I, I ain't seen that. <laughs> Maybe they don't do nothing for you, but it does a lot for me. Listen to what Jesus says. He says in verse 25, you know what? Jesus just about got fed up with this stranger. He just about got fed up with this. He says, here it is. How foolish you are. Watch this. And how slow of heart to believe, watch this, all that the prophets had declared. I believe Jesus says 2,000 years ago, if I can use my spiritual imagination, he, I'm sure he says, April fools. <laughs> April fools. You have become, watch this, come closer, unfortunate victims of the plot and the scheme of unbelief. And the question is, how? How, Lance? How, how did they not believe and how did they become um, victims? It was because they did not believe the word of God. And I don't care who you talk to all the time. I don't care what they say. It's only until you began to believe in the word of God that you can now move and have your being. Watch this. I need you to understand and catch this. Come closer, please. You must understand that the spoken word, as we're looking at our vision, is the second part. It's the E. It's to be in power. It's to empower all souls through what? Through biblical teaching. If you don't have biblical teaching, you cannot be empowered. If you have gone all week and you ain't read the word until I'm talking about it now, you cannot be empowered. And let me tell you something, on a good day, you got to fight to be holy. Because the closer you get to Jesus, the more scheming and the plotting the enemy tries. But tap somebody and say, it ain't going to work. This is what the word tells you. The word speaks about life. He, they failed to understand, here it is, that it was necessary that Christ, not the prophet, not the Nazarene, but Christ should suffer these things, watch this, and enter into glory. What you talking about? Let me ask you a question. What do you want God to do for you? What is it that you want to be in five years? What do you see yourself? What is it that you want to enter into? We ought to always want to enter into his glory, into his presence, no matter where that, that's at. I want to be where God is. Well, listen, watch this. The only way we can be where God is, you and I have to suffer. Don't trip. 
because it's your assignment. And don't try to excuse the time that God won't put more on me than I can bear. He knew that when he created you, that's why it's your assignment. So whatever you're going through is not too hard for God. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? And so whatever we have to go through, we have to suffer before we can enter into his glory. So Jesus goes on to give, here it is, correct interpretation, true meaning, sound doctrine, not what we want to hear. Because you know we're in a season now where folk just want to hear things uh, to scratch their itch. They, they want to hear things to satisfy their flesh. But what God wants us to know is that you need the truth to purify you. So here's the question. What are the things that has happened or happening now? And we fail to see the purposes as being necessary because we do not believe the scriptures. Because we do not believe the word of God. Ask someone, what's keeping you from believing? <laughs> One last time, come closer please. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. You notice Jesus himself drew near to them. But now I want you to look at verse 28. What you notice now is that it says, they drew near. You got that? They came near. They drew near. At first, it was only Jesus engaging them, right? Jesus engages them. Jesus comes to them. Jesus teaches them. Uh, that unbelief causes us to be foolish. But believing the word helps us to endure that which is necessary. So I need you to see this sight. As the picture is now becoming clearer. What started out as two men walking in isolation are now three persons in communion with Jesus. Okay, come, come closer. What started out as two men are now three men in communion with, okay. What started out as two men in isolation, as it's getting clearer now, it's three men. They started out thinking they was alone. But when Jesus began to open up that book, when he began to teach the scripture, you now see three men. It was Jesus drawing near. Now all of them are together in communion. You know, it's something, mother, about the presence of Jesus. How many of you, how many of you ever experienced Jesus? It's something... It's something about experience them, isn't it? It's something about the revelation of Jesus. When you didn't see it at first, but now you can see things clearer. There's something about the mystery of Jesus that human intellect cannot figure him out. But when you think on the things above, you can now become in communion with him. And the more you begin to know about Jesus and be taught about this Jesus, it causes us to thirst, to hunger, to want more of Jesus. Now catch this, come closer. Once the dialogue was finished, they have told, told Jesus about these things. And Jesus had opened the scripture and, and interpreted the scripture. The Bible says here that Jesus is what? He acted as if he was going on. And the act here symbolizes to us uh, and reminds us that Jesus would never, ever, never, ever force himself upon us. But I want you to look at verse 29. Because verse 29 presents a dramatic shift in the story. The Bible says that they urged him strongly. Let that soak in. They urged him strongly. Once they got in the word, they urged him strongly, stay with us. Y'all with me? Stay with us. Watch this because, watch this, it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. Now what day was they talking about? Was they talking about the physical day? Or was, was they talking about the time and the space in their life of unbelief? 
I want a way on the side that they're talking about the days that they have lived in darkness and lived in unbelief. He says, stay with us. Because anytime you tell Jesus to stay with you, darkness have to leave. Anytime you tell Jesus to stay with you, there's no more setting of the sun, but there's always rising of the sun. They said, stay with us. What happened? What happened? They invited Jesus in. And then they had what? A meal. What is a meal? A meal is when you sit down and you begin to receive. What you saying? When the Bible is open and it's rightly divided and it's rightly taught and interpreted, then it gives us access to invite Jesus in. And you just don't invite Jesus in so you can be a church member. No, you invite Jesus in to receive. He says, this is my body. This is my blood that was given for you. Watch this. And it's when they invited him in. It's when they received him that he vanished. Why did he vanish physically? Because God is spirit. And those who worship him must do so in spirit and truth. The reason why Jesus vanished is because I don't have to see him to believe him. Okay, come closer, please. When you believe Jesus, he ain't no little model. He ain't no little idol. He lives in you. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. So he vanished when they started to believe in him. Invite Jesus in. Huh? Receive him. And he'll live in you. The question is, do you see Jesus? Do you see him? So how do you answer that question? The way I see him is that he has to now live through me. So have you invited him? Have you invited him in? Have you read the word? Have you interpreted the word correctly? Or are you in Bible study? That somebody can agree with you and interpret it with you? Jesus. <laughs> Is with us and all you have to do is invite him in dare not lift him up to the holy one What's a, what a great day to yeah. give your life to Jesus Christ you plead my cause he died for you, you. He rose for you us. You break my chains. You overcome. You gave your life to give me mine. You say that I am free. How can Will you come? it be? It's an awesome time to come. How can Will you come? Right where you are, grab someone's hand. Father, we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you, God, for a sermonic illustration concerning Luke 24, the road to Emmaus, how they started out in isolation but they ended in relationship and fellowship. God, I thank you that because of your blood and because you defeated death by rising one third day morning, we have hope. We don't have to see you physically. We believe that you're inside of us. The reason why we're still here is only because of you. You're not just a prophet. You're not just Jesus of Nazareth. 
You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. You are Emmanuel, God with us. So we thank you. We thank you for this holy day. This day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for the saints. I thank you for those people who are here. Even those right now who may be wrestling with a decision. But God be with them. As we leave this place, we leave knowing that we have hope. <laughs> we leave knowing that sometimes the way to get to you is through suffering. We leave knowing that things are assigned to us. And it will not be complete until we walk through it. So God, I thank you. Everyone on every pew. Every person who demonstrated acts through this sermonic sermon. God, I thank you right now that we have given you the glory on this day. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Let the people of God shout hallelujah. 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 And someone shout, he, he's alive. Hug somebody and tell them he's alive. You know he lives in me. He's alive. He's alive.